Well, Huddleston Performance has been our Junior Dragster sponsor for 2014 and really stepped the pace out for 2015 season. We've made our way here to Shelbyville, Tennessee, the home of Huddleston Performance Junior Dragsters. And uh, Thomas Huddleston, good to see you, man, as always. And how, how's the offseason going for you? Pretty good. We've been dealing with cold weather and ice and snow, but looks like the weather's finally breaking. Absolutely. Hey, listen, first of all, on behalf of PDR, I want to say thank you for what you folks have done in the past. Your continued and, and more support for 2015 in the uh, both the junior dragster categories. And um, I know you guys build a lot of things here. You build these things from the ground up. What started out at one time as a five horsepower Briggs and Stratton is now turned into a big block of aluminum. Tell me about it. Yeah, these motors here, pretty much the only thing they have in common with where the Junior World started is crank seals. At this point, everything's bigger, bulkier, and just a lot more consistent than it used to be. Uh, this here is one of our three and a half lights. This is what you'll see in the Pro Junior class. Um, 790s at around 82, 83 miles an hour. Uh, your champion last year, Isaac Evans, ran one. Uh, Alexis Schultz and Preston Tanner both ran one. That was two and three finishes. So this one here gets the job done in Pro Junior about as well as anything out there. Could you imagine that little thing right there, 82 miles an hour? I mean, that is amazingly crazy. And I got to tell you that I was fortunate enough to get my son involved with this at the very onset. And we had one that they called the super stock motor, where you still had the pull handle and you lifted it off the thing. And we thought that was cool, but boy, that was really advanced. Yeah, it's got a little easier to race them these days with starters and, you know, just the parts becoming higher quality overall. So today's junior is a little easier to race than it was back in the old days where you had the legit lawnmower motors that may have been on a push mower last week. Right. So it's gotten a little easier from there. Uh, like everything, you know, yeah. the Pro Nitrous, the Pro Extreme cars, they've all gotten bigger and better over the years, and the juniors have done the same thing. We're just on a scaled-down version. Step headers even. I mean, I take a look at that pipe right there, and it looks, it appears to me at least to be just almost the way they build step headers on a high-dollar engine. Yes. Uh, these things here, as far as technology and such, uh, you know, they're one-lungers, but they're as technologically advanced as any of the motors you see at PDRA races. Beryllium copper seats, titanium valves, custom pistons, you know, billet crankshafts. These aren't, these aren't push mowers anymore. They're legit race cars. And, and for the most part here at Huddleston Performance, is it one of the uh, most important things you do? I mean, you do a lot of motors here, I know. Yes, the motor side of it's where we started. It's, you know, our bread and butter. Um, we've gone into the turnkey cars, and for the most part, those two are the two biggest things that we do. So, yeah, the motor side of it, that's the biggest thing that we do here. Speaking of turnkey cars, I can't help but, I've leaned on it a little bit for a moment, but I can't help but sit here and look at this complete work of art. And I got to, it is so advanced and so far beyond what, it was in 1993, I can't even tell you. Yeah, the cars these days, they've grown a ton from adjustable weight bars to the computers that are on them and being able to download and look at graphs just like you would on a big car, you know, to clutches that can adjust reaction time and how the motor is loaded throughout the run. You know, these things have gone from cars that just put up and down the racetrack to legitimately tuned killer race cars. And this is one of our turnkey cars here. This one will actually be in Enos with us next week as a turnkey pro junior. And it will be the same setup that Isaac won last year with, uh, Alexis and Preston both won last year with. So this one here will be ready to hunt in pro junior right off the trailer next week. So you literally could go to your uh, spot on the manufacturer's midway and, and purchase this car, turnkey for one price, and someone can race that same weekend. Yeah, yep. You can show up at Dallas and yeah. not own a single thing. And we can put you in the show in Pro Junior on Saturday. Wow, that's pretty amazing. And this car actually is uh, kind of a signature series. It's kind of your labeled type car. Yes, this is the Huddleston Performance Assassin. Uh, it's completely our car from top to bottom. Everything from our own body design to our own laid out weight bars. The chassis itself is our layout. Uh, it's ours from top to bottom. That is pretty cool. Obviously, you have some folks that help you build them and those type of things and, and some manufacturers as well. But, man, i got to tell you, I sit back here and look at some of the componentry on this thing and just the design and the bill of aluminum, it just, it just blows me away, even to the canopy-type top on this thing. They've just come so far. Yeah, a ton of stuff. You know, you raced juniors back in the days. You remember the parts that broke and the pieces that weren't heavy-duty enough. 
we've kind of eliminated that over time. You know, bulkier chains, bulkier rear axles, beefier clutches, the motors are more bulletproof, the cars themselves work better than they ever have. Overall, it's just a much better product than it was, you know, 15, 20 years ago when we were out racing juniors. So, yeah, cars these days, they're killer from top to bottom. That is really amazing to look at him. Yeah, it's a sight to behold. Let's slip into the next door here. And I know you got Dad working and everybody's thrashing, trying to get things done. One of the things I also know that you guys are pretty well known for here is your cylinder head. But Dad Bo, how are you doing, Big Daddy? Man, what are you, what are you working on here? I know obviously it's a block. What's, uh, what process are you going through? Just getting the valve job worked out on another new block. So these blocks, this one here in particular, does this start as a block of aluminum or it comes down, it's a, all knocked down, or is this a, a cast type thing? Uh, we have the block cast ourselves. Uh, we have a foundry up in Pennsylvania that does that for us. Uh, they're 356 T6, just like any other race car uh, component would be. Right. Um, we have them machined by one of our partners to do the CNC work for us. When they come here, we just have to finish up the valve job and put them together. One of the things that I know that you specialize in and one of the things that always is a big part of any drag racing engine is, is in the cylinder head department. It's one of your specialties. Yeah, airflow is uh, pretty much what makes a bracket motor happy. Yeah. Uh, flow numbers don't mean much. Dyno numbers don't mean much. Consistency does. The only way you get that is keep beating on them on the racetrack and figuring them out till you get there. One cylinder or eight cylinders, two cylinders, it doesn't matter whether you go in the dynamometer with a two-cylinder V-twin or a one-cylinder. It's all about air and fuel. You got to get it in. You got to get it out. That's it. You got to light it while it's in there. <laughs> I'll let you go to work because I'm looking around here, Jimmy. And there's a fair amount of motors on one, two, three, four, five, probably, probably all pretty well. We've got to be ready for Enos, I assume. Yeah, for the most part, most of these have to be ready to go. Not all of them will be at Enos, but, you know, you don't want to leave a shop with motors in it whenever you head off to a race. So, yeah, all these motors will be ready to go. Uh, we got some more in the back that just came in that we'll get apart here in the next couple of days, and they'll be ready to go. You guys, when it comes right down to it, and now just taking a little glance, and I know that a lot of things you don't want folks to see, So, but, you know, I, you got carburetors, so do you modify your own carburetors as well? Yes, we use Makuni carburetors exclusively on everything, but when they come in here, they're gas carburetors set up for motorcycles. There's quite a bit of conversion that goes into every carburetor that leaves here. So they come in, we pull them apart, we put our pieces on them and build them our way, and they head back out the door on the motors. Yeah, that is really, really cool. I got to tell you, Makuni carburetors coming off of the motorcycles, I mean, uh, blocks that are cast. And again, we talk about the days. He said lawnmower, but I always go back to the days of the early 70s of the five horsepower mini bikes, you know. And, and uh, I don't know, did you ever have a mini bike? No, you're ahead of my generation <laughs> there. That's one of those that starting, you know, mini bikes. I was never a big bike guy. He yeah. was into dirt bikes. He enjoyed that kind of stuff, but I was never into that stuff. I pretty much was drag racing from the word go. So That's pretty cool. Listen, I know you got a lot going on. I do want to make mention of another thing. This is basically a, a three-person family operation. My mom's hiding somewhere around here. But between uh, Bo and Thomas and Mom, it's a really it's a straight-up three-people operation. You know, of course, you rely on a handful of manufacturers. Yes, it's the three of us here. we got a couple of good manufacturers we work with to keep parts rolling and keep stuff moving. But as far as in this shop, the only person you're ever going to talk to is a Huddleston. Well, so far we've talked about engines, we've talked about turnkey cars, we've talked about a lot of different things. We've talked about the top three players in the category in 2014, but one of the things we haven't talked about is uh, your own clutch that you build pretty much in-house here. Tell me about it. Yeah, we've got our own line of clutch. It's the Huddleston Performance Whole Shot Series clutch. This is actually a customer's clutch here that just got freshened up and is getting ready to head back. Um, these things here... We can do anything you want to do with your race car, from changing your driver's reaction time to loading the motor at different points on the racetrack. Anything you want to do can be done with these clutches these days. So they've really come a long way over the years from we had the standard clutch that, you know, you could run up and down a racetrack with, but you weren't doing much tuning, yeah. to nowadays, whatever number you want to change on that time slip, I can help you change it. Right. So, yeah, we've gone, come a long way in the clutch department. Yeah, you can actually hear them as they go down the track, which leads me to something else. That's the Huddleston Performance tip, tip question of the event. Tell me a little bit about what that's going to be involved here for 2015. 
Yes, we've stepped up our involvement with the PDRA. Uh, we'll be the sponsor of both junior classes, and then we've also got the tech tips that we'll be doing on the live feeds where literally uh, people send in the questions that they want answered, whether it be a junior-related question, a pro-nitrous question, a pro-extreme question, whatever you want to answer to, send it in, and we'll be doing the tech tips throughout the live feeds with all the various racers, and we'll get answers to whatever questions you guys got. Wow, that is gonna that is gonna be super cool. I want to slip out of here, and I want to bring in Tammy, your mom, for a minute. I know she don't want to be on camera, but Tammy, thanks for having us today, and thanks for, thanks for what you guys do for us. I mean it sincerely. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you guys coming to see us. This is one of your favorite rooms. This is the parts department. You're probably the lady who does the shipping. Give me kind of an overview. I see these beautiful works of art and all these trick parts here and there. This is our parts room that. When you call in and need a part, whether it be clutch, motor, this is going to be where we come and check for it. Um, the motors you see up here, there are a couple of new motors. There's also customers that when their motor's finished, right before it's ready to ship back out, it goes up on the shelf, and then we get it shipped out. Um, we pretty much keep everything that we have in this area. Um, if you need something, this is where I go to see if we've got it. So if the, if the, uh, the guys are out there and they're putting one together, you can put it together by way of a parts list or a build sheet. And just go to the certain, obviously there's part numbers on basically everything as I spin around here and see everything from pistons to uh, rings to, to uh, looks like extensions for the pipes and all. Yes, we keep the pistons, rings, all that stuff back here. We have a bin that when we're building a new motor, we come back here and just pull and put it in the bin. It goes to the build room, oh, and that's you. where we start with. So Put it all in one bin, and they got all the parts right there and there. That is pretty cool. I'm just going to reach in here real quick and ask you because i don't have a clue give me an idea what that might be this is something to do with throttle kill switch okay this is mounts on the motor the goes over a cable goes to the carburetor or excuse me to the spark plug and it kills the motor it's a kill switch for the motor i'll be darned well i thought i had it right anyway another one of the great parts and the third part of the family that i talked about tammy mom who's really the backbone of this whole thing well thomas i just got to ask you one thing it's some Big, big news coming out of your shop here, and uh, it's all about those low, man. This is probably one of the coolest cars ever built in the world. Oh, yeah. This deal here is a dream come true. From the time that we started in the junior world, Pro Mod's been where we wanted to be. So to be in a position where this car was even available to us, uh, you know, got to thank my parents and Mr. Ellsbury for even letting us get the car. There's a lot of people involved in this deal, but... Those three are at the front of the pack because without those three, this thing's not sitting here. So, yeah, I'm excited to get out and get to racing this thing. Uh, let me ask you a question real quick. Have you had an opportunity to get behind the wheel of thing at all so far or no? Yeah, we went down to Montgomery last weekend. Um, we had a junior race down there. And on Sunday, there was enough time that we were able to make a couple shakedown runs while we were there. We just made 100-foot squirts, basically, you know, learning how to drive everything. Um, but, yeah, we've been on the racetrack with it and came home with four fenders and not a bunch of broke parts. So we consider that a success to start with. Well, I certainly would. Man, i got to tell you something. So much history behind that car. And, of course, the late, great Tony Russell, who was such a wonderful gentleman, such a great guy for this board. And, and I just got to tell you, man, this, the looks of this car. And, I mean, this thing is, is one of the greatest fan favorites that has ever been in the sport period. Yeah, this is one of those that there were very few cars on the list that had sentimental value, but this was one of them. You know, we knew Tony from years ago. We used to bracket race with him down at Huntsville Dragway before he ever went pro mod racing. We've known Paul and that entire Russell family for a lot of years. So to be able to bring this thing here, it's kind of like it came to a second home. And for Mr. Ellsbury to allow us to buy the car from him, uh, you know, can't thank him enough for giving us the opportunity to go do this. Is your plan to take this thing all the way throughout the series, throughout all ten events? We will be at nine of the events. The one interferes with our Bristol race, mm -hmm. uh, our big week-long deal at Bristol. Um, but the game plan is to be at the other nine of them and be competing in Pro Extreme all year. That is so cool. i got to tell you something, Ben. It's been a great, great, great day here at Huddleston Performance. I can't, first of all, thank you enough for what you guys do for PDRA. Everything you did, not only last year, Stepping things up this year. This tech thing I'm going to look forward to really big. And uh, you folks be at the track. A, a turkey race car if somebody needs it. Bringing your Pro Extreme car to the event. Of course, your folks who are wonderful people. 
And by the way, I want to make it clear that, uh, you know, if, if you're running around there and you're one of the fans, you guys have options on your apparel and stuff like that as well. So be sure to stop by your pitter. I can't thank you enough for the day. We appreciate you guys coming out. We're excited to be involved in the PDRA again. We're excited to get out racing in the PDRA and look forward to a good 2015. Thomas, Bo, Tammy, the Huddleston, uh, Huddleston Racing family, I'm telling you, there's some great people, and we appreciate them being in the PDRA. You're watching PDRA TV.